Welcome to today's 3D print, Tom Frey. What's up? Um, I think the universe was trying to tell me something this morning. See, I've been playing around with the fabric of the space-time continuum. I was working on a, a QSN. I'm going to have a detailed video of this in the future. Um, this is about 55 hours of printing on an ender. <laughs> so it's about a 70 hour print on an ender um, and it's looking pretty damn good now it took forever to slice this over an hour and a, like an hour hour and a half to slice the damn thing and get it saved to an SD card it's just, it just brings this computer to its knees um, but it worked for this oh shit that fell off that's not good hang on sorry about that I, I actually got Octoprint set up and working, and a webcam for it, all that stuff. So that'll be coming in its own video. Um, I like the potential of Octopi and Octoprint. I am not impressed with the UI. It's very lackluster in my opinion. It looks like it's designed for big fat finger UI, and the problem is that kind of defeats the point of it. I mean, the, I can see better what's on the printer on the little freaking LCD screen than I can on the Octopi. It's it's. The UI needs help. I'm hoping that's something that I can change because I do not like the UI at all. Making sure that I got the camera pinned up up top and the printer jiggled enough to make it fall, so I gotta make sure it's not gonna fall again. I gotta secure it better. But anyway, that'll be in another video. Um, so, on to the QSN. I think it's Quasi Crystalline Spin Network. Apparently, this is a, um, a three dimensional squished down representation of 11 dimensional quantum space or something. I don't know. It's it's cool looking. That's all I care about. Well, anyway, a lot of stringing, and I really didn't feel like spending the hour it would take to re-slice the damn thing, and the 20 hours that I wasted getting this far into it. So I was like, screw it. I'll just let it go, and I'll burn away the strings later. Um, so I was taking, you know, this torch and burning away all the strings. Well, mental note to self: don't torch it while it's sitting on the printer. At least don't torch the backside while it's sitting on the printer, because um. <laughs> it caught fire. <laughs> this morning I'm sitting here at the computer and you know, before I leave checking the prints, make sure everything's going good. You know, the octopi went up. I got a Stargate going and it failed. I'll get to that in a minute, you know. Piece of the Stargate. So I'll make a little chopper disc out of it. And um I go, What's that? And I look over and I see flames coming up behind the QSN. It's like, oh shit! And I jump up and I'm blowing <laughs> blowing it out and I finally blow it out and I'm looking at this QSN and I'm like 55 hours of printing <laughs> click and hit the power button because there's no saving that that sucked and I am not kidding 60 seconds after I turned the printer off everything goes click the whole house shuts down. Why the whole house shut down? Let me show you. Because that dimwit hit the power pole about a mile from the house. <laughs> I, I left immediately afterwards to go back to work. The power turned back on before I left, but you know, obviously all the printers stopped. So all the printers were failures. Mental note, as soon as you have the money, buy a couple UPSs. The problem is you need one UPS per printer because they, they actually take a lot of power. You know, you know, 200 watts is not a lot of power to your house, but 200 watts is a lot of power to a UPS. So, and I needed to run for at least 10 minutes. So I probably, I could probably do a, two or three enders on each UPS, but things like the CR10, each one would need their own UPS. And those things are like 100 bucks a pop. The, the cheap $40, $50 ones, they don't, they're not enough. They don't have enough voltage. If the, if the heater kicked on for the heat bed, it would probably trip the um, UPS. It probably couldn't even handle the draw. But um, we'll see. I'll have to experiment with one. But anyway, um, as I'm leaving for work, I'm driving, and I, I come upon this. This car has crashed into the pole here, which obviously is what took out the power. It must hit something. The control box tripped something, and then it, obviously the safety kicked in and it tripped back on again when it realized it was fine. And the other car is wrecked on that flatbed there, so I'm guessing one of them ran the red light and clobbered the other. <laughs> so that's why all the printers stopped. But that is two 
instances within 60 seconds warning me. The universe is sending me a warning. Don't fuck with the fabric of space-time. Too bad. I'm going to make one of these anyway. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that was funny. So, uh, the next Mega Printer will be delayed a little bit because all the prints are failures. <laughs> you know, the Stargate failed, the QSN failed, and um, another Dragon I was printing that failed. It was a test one just to see how layers work. Not worth showing. Um, that's cool. So, I might be buying the 13 Ender 2s that were returned. Um, I have a tentative price agreement to buy them. I'm going to slap them on a credit card. I am praying that they were returned for user error and not returned because they were bad. None of the three I got were bad, so it probably was just what I thought. You know, users don't know what they're getting into and go, yeah, I don't want this, send it back. And um, I'm hoping to sell three or four of the printers to help pay for all of them so that my cost will be rendered zero. Um, so if anybody's interested in those, it'll be U.S. only. Um, you'll pay the shipping. Probably be 200 bucks a pop, same as your best, but it'll be U.S. shipping. And I will assemble, tune, perfect each printer and include a roll of filament so that when you get it, you know it'll work. So look for that in the future. I'll be trying to sell three or four of those just to you know make my cost break even. And um, But let's talk about money. That's important. Um, both because I need it and both because it can taint somebody. Angus at Maker's Muse, if you're not subscribed, go subscribe to Angus. I'll wait. You can just pause the video and go do it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, Maker's Muse is a good channel. He is what got me into 3D printing. Well, no, I, not got me into it, but got me excited about 3D printing. He was one of the first major channels I found, and I love his stuff. He is one of the few content providers where if something new comes up from Maker's Muse, it's an automatic watch. I don't even care what it is. I'm going to watch it, whatever it is. I might not finish it if I don't like whatever it's about, but um, I'll, it, he's an automatic watch. It's like an episode of Star Trek coming up. I watch it. It's, that's, it's simple as that. You watch an episode of Star Trek, I watch an episode of Maker's Muse. Same thing with Joel Telling, 3D Printing Nerd. You know, he's an automatic watch. Not too many YouTube channels get that from me. Um, but you know, it's 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 a given. I'm gonna watch whatever it is. Um, but he was talking about this very subject, um, being paid to do reviews, um, affiliate links, stuff like that. And I agree with most of what he said. I mean, I mean, Kim and I are, I believe, on the, a similar page. But this is important to discuss because my next video in the next few days is going to be this. New toy. <laughs> I like new toys. And you like new toys. We all like new toys. By the way, a shout out to Miss Tube. Although I'm not going to use it in future videos because I don't like it. Not that it's bad. I just don't like it. But Miss Tube made this for me. And that was extremely generous of the person to do that. I'm assuming a she. Um, so I'm sorry if I assume wrong. The name as far as I'm concerned, the name provided is um, androgynous. It could be for either. Um, probably because I, it's a slightly foreign sounding name, so I'm not entirely sure of the gender, but it seems to be either one, so I don't want to make an assumption, but uh, I don't want to post the name because I wasn't given permission to, and I don't know if they want that privacy, so I'm not going to do that. So, Mistube, thank you very much for making this. Um, I might take you up on trying to make me a logo. Um, one thing that I think would be interesting I haven't done it because I'm, I don't have the kind of skill necessary to do this. But here is the logo I made, and I like this. This is going to be on my business cards. It's basically a, a molted embossed pattern with a glow, and it's today's 3D print with a print head. And the wires are connected to the O, and the, it's printing the, um, um, this. So it might be interesting if that print head were to, like, um, like if uh, like if five percent of the 3D were missing, and that print head were to just move back and forth, just like you know four or five times, you know, dit 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 dit, and end up you know dit 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 with the filament coming out, and it would end up as this, and just a single loop, you know, just go nee 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 done stop, just a teeny bit of animation, uh, something like that would be cool, but you don't have to do that. I mean, that's 
I was very impressed when you sent me that. Um, that you'd be willing to do that. So that's why it's on this video. I want to say thank you for making that. So, let's talk about... Well, since Angus talked about it, I'm going to talk about it. That seems to be what people do on YouTube. Everybody gives their opinion on whatever the current topic du jour is. And it's an interesting one, so why not? First, I believe I give unbiased reviews. Some people say, well, that's impossible. You can't give an unbiased review. I believe you are wrong. I believe you are using the word in the English language incorrectly. I believe you mean something else, but you're using this word. I believe what you mean to say is you can't give a non-opinionated review. And that is correct. That would be, well, it's not impossible. I'm going to give you an unbiased, non-opinionated review of the CR-10. Ready? This is the CR-10. It has a print volume of 300 by 300 by 400 millimeters. It has a hot end capable of going to 260 degrees and a hot bed capable of going to roughly 90 degrees. It has a glass top. It is made of aluminum extrusions. There you go. I just gave an unbiased, unopinionated review of a CR-10. How many of those are you going to watch? <laughs> the whole stinking point of watching any video I make, I hope, and I think, is because you are interested in my opinion, in my experience. You want an opinionated video. Bias is a derogatory term. Bias, look it up in the dictionary. Go on Google and type in definition biased. Biased is when you have a prejudice toward or against something. Okay? A prejudice is when you have a re a an opinion that is not based in reason or from actual experience. That's what prejudice is. So a biased review would be a review of a product that is not based in reason or on actual experience. So that would be like me doing a review of the CR-10 without actually using a CR-10, so I don't really have experience with it. And, um, or if, even if I had problems with it, I'd give it a glowing review, or if I hate it, i give it a harsh review, even though I didn't have any problems with it. That would be a bias, okay? So there's a difference between a bias and an opinion. You watch my videos because you are interested in my opinion. I watch Makers Muse videos because I trust Angus and I am interested in his particular opinion. I mean, there's a hundred videos out there I can watch, thousands of videos I watch in 3D printing. I like Angus's opinions on things. I believe the reason and experience he uses to form those opinions jive with what I like. So I watch his videos. My objective is to present to you reviews that will make you like me. That will cause, not make you like me, cause you to like me. That will make you desire to come back. That you will look forward to seeing my videos. That's the objective. So we're not talking about bias. We're talking about opinion. If a video is biased, while you can be tricked so, for example, if Angus were to make a biased review, he would probably fool me and probably fool most people at least one time, okay? Because he has already established a level of trust with his viewer base. I implicitly trust what um, Angus says. Trust but verify, but I trust what Angus says. So if he were to conduct a biased review, meaning a prejudiced review, a, a disingenuous or dishonest review. Remember, bias is a derogatory term. If you're saying somebody is biased, you are calling them a name. That is a derogatory term. So you need to understand the difference between bias and opinion. Um, their opinion might be garbage, but it doesn't mean it's biased. <laughs> Angus is not garbage. I like his opinion. But anyway, um, he could probably get one over on you. But most people are pretty intelligent about this come about this kind of stuff. I mean, we have evolved over hundreds of thousands of years to detect bullshit. And we're, we're pretty good at detecting bullshit. 
I'm, I'm hoping that's why people like me, because I'm, I'm hoping that I'm coming across as truly genuine. And I think people will like that. I hope. And um, the same thing with Angus. I think he's genuine. I like him. That's why I watch him. Same thing with Joel Telling. Um, I hope Joel Telling starts making some serious money 3D printing so he doesn't have to work so damn hard. Because <laughs> he looks like he works very hard. <laughs> he's always tired sometimes. He's very, very tired. But, um... So that's the thing with bias. Now, how about the money? The ANET E10 Gearbest paid me to do a review on the ANET E10. Gearbest paid me to review this, which I will be reviewing next. Now, when I say paid me, they paid me indirectly. They didn't directly pay me. They didn't say, here's 500 bucks, make a review for this printer. Like my job would say, here's a pizza, go deliver it to this address. They paid me indirectly. I get to keep the printer. This here printer's worth, I believe, $275. That printer's worth $260. That's payment. The issue is not whether I was paid. The issue is, am I honest about it? It'd be disingenuous to say I was not paid by Gearbest, because that printer costs money. They're not the manufacturer. It wasn't a pittance for them to send me that. They took a piece of their inventory and sent it to me, and they expect a return. And I expect to try to provide it to them, okay? Because I would love to get more printers. <laughs> and it looks like I am. It looks like I'm going to be getting two more printers. A. Um, it looks like I'm going to be getting, I'm hoping, it looks like it, seems like it. I'm going to get a Creality CR10 S4. And I should be getting the new CR10 Mini. Yes, there are two versions of the CR10 Mini. You have the um, looks interesting but less desirable to me uh, acrylic base CR10 Mini. And then you have the metal frame, all metal. They're both, both metal, but this is all metal, meaning more like the current CR10 Mini. I'm getting the all metal one, and that's good. That's, I mean, it would probably be fine with the acrylic base. I believe it's like the Ender, where it's just it, the base, it's the metal extrusion is bolted to the acrylic, but I would prefer an all-metal one. So it looks like I'm getting the all-metal one. That's, that's great. Oh, yes, yes, yes. New toys. New toys. You can never have too many toys. Okay. <laughs> so, I am being paid. Indirectly, but I'm being paid. I also get paid a second way from Gearbest, and I am gladly taking advantage of this. I'd be stupid not to. I currently have $207 sitting in my commission account with GearVest. I have helped them secure sales of six CR10s and four Ender 2s, uh, Raspberry Pi, a small quadcopter, and a couple of little trinkets. Okay, I have helped them get $3,279 in sales, for which they will pay me $207.07. That's not bad. Uh, I'm okay with that. No. The cool thing, though, the thing to remember is, people say, well, wait a minute, that means you're tainted. Well, could be. I mean, I could be driven to drive sales of these printers in order to make this money. But see, the thing is, GearBest isn't a printer company. GearBest is a gadgets and goodies company. They make literally everything from shrink wrap tubing to 3D printers to quadcopters to lighters to batteries. Because none of this is from GearBest. I'm just showing you examples. To little tripods to cell phones and tablets and everything. Uh, basically, it's eBay, but just tech. Okay, and it's all from China. It's basically a China direct way of getting tech. Gadgets. You can buy knives. You can buy balloons. You can buy all kinds of crap on GearBest. It's mostly, you know, toys. Printers, stuff like that, quadcopters, RC cars, things like that. Gearbest does not give one flying fuck what I sell you. They don't care. Do you know how many? I love it. It's one of my favorite printers, the ANET E10. I love the printer. It, it's elegant. I like the design, basically CR10. But I, I like the fact that it's um. It's got the squished longer form factor, so it's a small footprint printer. It takes about the same space as my Model Price Maker Select and Rondell Duplicator i3, but it's got a 300mm Z height and a 270mm um, Y axis. Hello! 
That dramatically expands what you can print. Is it perfect? <laughs> Hell no. Watch my videos. I tear into that thing. It's got a lot of QC issues. If I could meet somebody from Anet, I'd put them over my knee and spank them and say, what the hell were you thinking? All this stuff is stupidly easy to fix at the factory. Do it. It's got a lot of QC issues, but the core of the printer is beautiful. I like it. I do wish they would have used V-Rail. I cannot imagine that there is much of a different cost between T-Rail and V-Rail. How could there be that much of a cost? They both have wheels, they're just different shapes. They both have aluminum extrusions, they're just different shapes. I mean, is the cost really that much of a difference? Redo it with the V-Rail. It's better. It's just better. Um, and the, the carriage, center it. Don't have that offset bottom wheel. That's why the damn thing won't the tip. That wheel needs to be in the center. If that means you've got to move the extruder out somewhere, do it. Okay? But you know how many ANA E10s I've sold on Gearbest? They sent me that printer for free. $260 printer. They gave it to me for free. I asked for it. You know, he says, hey, this guy, I don't want to say his name, um, let's call him T, he, he contacted me, which surprised me, because I am very, very tiny on YouTube, I am small fish, so I was very surprised he contacted me, I'm guessing he saw my Juan Howl videos and stuff like that, where I have a few thousand views, and um, I also tend to get pretty good interaction with you guys, which is something I like, it gives me pleasure, and I enjoy it. It's not enough for me to post videos. If I don't get any interaction, it's kind of boring, you know? I want to know you guys are enjoying it. So when people start hitting me with questions and stuff like that, that's fun to me. So anyway, he contacts me and says, can I send you a printer? And I was like, really? Free printer? Uh, hello, yes. Uh, first, does it cost anything? He said, no. Second, can I be honest? He said, yes. Now, being allowed to be honest and the consequences of being honest are two different things. If I don't produce your best in sales, well, they're going to stop sending me printers. That's why they're sending me three more printers, because I have a pretty decent amount of sales for the size of my channel in the short period of time I've done it. And I hope that's because I do a good job. But they don't care what I sell you. You know how many a 9 e 10s I've sold? Zero. <laughs> None. They're fine with that, because I've got sales. So, you know, when you guys want to help, you don't have to buy the GearBest thing I'm linking to. If you want that thing, great, buy it. But if you click on one of those links and buy something else you want, that still helps me. Because I'm still bringing them sales. And that's all they really care about. They're like, a, they're like the Walmart of technology. Walmart doesn't care if you buy that particular toilet paper. They only care that you come in and buy stuff. So as long as I can bring them revenue, they will gladly give me whatever makes me happy and whatever increases the number of viewers on my channel. You know, it's one of the reasons I picked this particular printer because I like the technology. It uses the same V-wheel, V-slot tech as um, the CR-10s do and because of my experience with the CR-10 and the Ender 2, I trust that tech. I think that tech is what... I would prefer all my printers to now use that tech because I believe it works properly. I like how it works. So I picked this printer because of that. I think this printer will be two things. One, useful to me. And two, useful to you. You know, uh, you got something like that Ant E-Carry thing. Why would I get that? The Ender 2 is a superior printer at a cheaper price. Alright, so there's no reason for that. I3 Mega. Okay, it's got a small print volume like the, the Wanhelm and Duplicators. I could just buy a Wanhelm or a Duplicator for a cheaper price. Why would I want the i3 Mega? Because everybody's already done the i3 Mega. But this printer's cool. I like this. You'll see, you'll see it when I make the video. Alright, so the trick is, to be honest, you guys know this printer was sent to me for free. You guys know I am being indirectly paid for this printer by the actual possession of the printer itself. I don't have to send it back. It's mine. This printer, I'm going to, assuming it's not garbage, I'm going to be printing the living hell out of it. So it's going to get used. <laughs> All my printers get used. They're, they're going to get used. Um, so as long as I keep you guys happy, and your guys' happiness causes you to reward me by using my links to buy the stuff that you're going to buy anyway, then we all win. As long as I am honest about that. That's the trick. When you are dishonest about it, when you try to hide it, or try to smooth it over, or, or to try to delude yourself into thinking it's something that's not, that's when you get into trouble. That's when you 
breach the trust of your viewer base, and that's what I hope to not do. Um, I'm going to try to keep this under 30 minutes. I don't know if I'll succeed. i only got four minutes left. Um, 28 minutes. One clip. So, affiliate links. There's nothing wrong with affiliate links. All that is is commission. You know, I suggest you go shop here, and they reward me for that, as long as you're clear about it. If you'll notice, I'm slapping that pinned ad for GearBest on all of my posts now. You know, T asked me to, that's not his name, I'm just using that, asked me to say, hey, can you push this on your videos? And I was like, sure. You know, I could be honest, right? You know about the stuff I use and not use. He said, absolutely. And um, so I did. You'll notice it says I have used and support these three up top because I've used them and I think they're good buys. The rest of this stuff I've never used. If you want it, great. You check out other YouTube videos. Here's my affiliate links to GearBest. It'll help me out, but only if that's what you want. One guy bought a Tronxy X5S with my affiliate link. Thank you very much, whoever you are. I really appreciate that. You, if you if you want to know, I think I need twenty one dollars. Thank you. <laughs> that helps a lot. All right. If I can triple this, you know, in a couple of years, I could do this for a living. Meaning, I can make great videos for you guys all the time and not be so stressed out. And it's a win win. I get to make a living doing what I love to do. What people seem to forget, though, and people get pessimistic about, is that the customer is king. And in this situation, you are the customer. I desire your support as viewers, as commissions, as Patreons, as affiliate link usage. My hope is that if I can provide you with a value, if I can provide you with entertainment, that you will support me. It's a symbiotic relationship. When you try to be a leech, you break the symbiosis and you breach the trust. So as long as you are straight up about what's going on, straight up about where it came from, straight up about the fact that this paid even if indirect, and you are straight up that these are affiliate links, and you tell people these are affiliate links. Most people don't care, but people hate having the wool pulled over their eyes. That just even if there's no harm, that annoys people. It annoys me. Alright? Now that I know about this, like, for example, I now make sure I like every one of Angus's or Joel's videos that I watch. I used to only like because it would put it into, I figured, I'm subscribed, of course I like it. But I would use the like kind of as a, um, a, um, a playlist, you know, a like. Okay, I want to watch this again at some point in time, and I'd hit like, and it would add it to that liked list in YouTube. But apparently now the way YouTube deals with their algorithm, um, the likes, the amount of time you watch a video, and whether or not there's commentary, meaning people talking in the comments about the video, is a greater influence than the total number of views on a video. So views are less important now. That's why you're seeing YouTube videos change, um, because they have to adjust to that new algorithm. And I'm probably not going to make my time. i got 55 seconds. I'll just probably start it now. <laughs> Be a short video? I am going to work on that. i got to figure out how to work on that. I think one of the things I need to do is to, you know, let's not jump topic, I'll come to that later. So um, you're going to see the shift in YouTube as people adjust to the algorithm that YouTube uses to, um, to promote videos. Um, right now I'm small fry. If I can break through to the point where I actually start escalating in subscribers and views, I mean, I'm never going to make any money from YouTube itself. The way the algorithm has changed, you need millions of subscribers and hundreds of thousands of views to make anything. I think my most popular video was the accident in my um, Geo Tracker, and that's got like 50 or 60,000 views. Blew me away. Someone posted on, or someone asked me about it on Reddit, and it went crazy. Um, it's just a few seconds in my car going, yeah, <laughs> because somebody hit me and caused an accident. It's dark, you can hardly see anything, but it's got over 50,000 views. And the thing on YouTube says that had I monetized that video, I would make a dollar thirteen. I'm not worried about monetizing YouTube. I'm never going to make money. If you ever see any ads on my videos, um, if I put them there, I will tell you. And uh, otherwise, it's YouTube doing it without my say. So I, I imagine they can do that. It's their site. I imagine they can put their own ads in front of stuff. I hope they don't. Um, I don't like those obnoxious ads that you can't skip. I'll, I'll reload a goddamn page until it gives you one I can skip. <laughs> I, I hate being forced into it. Um, 
but on some channels, I'll actually sit there and watch the ad now. You know, I'm not really watching, I'll just let it play. You know, if I go to Joel or Yeti or Barky or um, um, RWG or whoever, you know, the, um, um, Angus, you know, I'll let their ads play. Uh, if an ad comes up, I'll, I'll, I'll stop. So I'll, I'm tempted to hit skip, and I'll just say, okay, we'll let it play. It's, it's 15 seconds of my life, I don't care. If it's a 30 plus second ad, sorry, I'm going to reload or I'm going to skip. But if it's a 15 second ad, 20 second ad, 10 second ad, I'm going to let it play because it helps them. Um, I'm hoping I never need to do that. Um, but, for example, one of my favorite, um, I am not going to give you the number and I'm not going to give you the name of the YouTuber because I don't know if this is privileged information or not. I don't think it is. I think anybody can see it, but I'm not sure. Um, let me know. If you guys go to my Patreon page, can you see how many Patreons I have? Like, does it tell you that, or do you have to actually be a patron to see that? I don't know. But anyway, he does tool stuff. I love his stuff. His videos are great, they're fun, they're entertaining, and they're even educational. Um, but anyway, this person has 6,800 patrons. That means that person is making at minimum $6,800 a month. That's $80,000 a year. If I can make a quarter of that, it would change my life. <laughs> so that's my objective. My objective is to make a living doing this. All right? um, that's the American dream. If I could make a living doing what I love to do, I mean, I'm never going to be big like him, but I also don't have big aspirations like those people. 20 grand a year would be plenty for me. If I can get to the point where I can make that much per year after taxes, I'll do it in a heartbeat. I'll quit my jobs and just do this. It'd be fun. Who wouldn't like to make a living doing what they love to do? To go to bed saying, tomorrow morning I'm going to get up and build a 3D printer and I'm going to be paid for it. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to print this gorgeous dragon, and it's my job. Hello? <laughs> it stops being work at that point. It, it, it becomes just who you are. It becomes what you do, and then you don't have to struggle anymore. That's, that's what everybody wants. So that is my objective. Can I do it? I don't know. Maybe I can't. Maybe I can never break through and get enough for it to be self-sustaining. Um, I don't know. I'm going to try. And hopefully I can be entertaining while I do it because whether I fail or succeed, I enjoy doing it. So I'm going to keep doing it for as long as I can. So I hope I will not breach your trust. If I do something you guys consider sketchy, call me on it. Say something. And if you don't like my explanation, say so. Okay? keep me honest. I'm going to keep myself honest by being transparent, by being open. So, as long as you are transparent, open, and honest, there is nothing wrong with commissions. There's nothing wrong with receiving free products. There's nothing wrong with being paid via those free products to do a review. Um, now, if someone were to send me a printer and say, uh, we want this, this, and this, I'd be like, okay, no thank you. Just don't send the printer to me. You know, because that's just not the way it works. I am not going to breach my trust because of that. And I have to say, the the person who contacted me from Gearbest never asked me anything. They never asked me to do anything except, can you make more videos? Can you put these links in the videos? Don't forget to make affiliate links. See, the affiliate links are critical to them because in order for them to determine whether it's worth sending you more goodies, they have to know what they're getting. And that's what the affiliate links do. The affiliate links tell them, okay, we got these sales and they came from Nerese. Okay? That means Nerese is worth sending more stuff to because we're making money. Okay? It's a partnership. And as long as you're honest and straightforward about that, there's no problem with that. So, as far as what's going on with the channel and what I am doing, I'm going to make a big push to clean this hellhole up tomorrow. I've already started. You can see it's all nice and clean because the, the, the few people who have pointed that out are dead right. The, this place should not be messy. It's a bit tough. My dad died in December, left me with a huge amount of debt and a huge 
list of problems. Left me with $176,000 in debt in my name. <laughs> yeah, fun. I deliver pizza for $14,000 a year. Fun. But, um, he was also, in the last 10 years, he's a bit of a hoarder. So, I have this house I can't afford, and it is full of stuff. <laughs> it is... Wow, it's... I work so many hours that I have a path into my room and my bed, and it's just... You know what I'm gonna do with my room? <laughs> I'm gonna like I'm gonna be like I want to keep that. I want to keep that. I want to keep that. And everything else is just gonna get dumped into the trailer and taken down to the dumpster at work. <laughs> I don't need it. And the way I figure it, if I haven't touched it in six months, I'm probably never going to touch it ever again. Might as well just throw it away. Just I'm tired of the garbage. And you would not believe how many times I've filled that dumpster at work. How many trailer loads. I bought a boat trailer and planked it and put stake bodies on it myself because I couldn't afford to buy a cargo trailer. I got it for 200 bucks and about 100 bucks in lumber, so 300 bucks. I got a 12 foot long trailer that I can fill to capacity dual axle. Um, I got to drive around to the free bridge in Trenton to come home because the freaking mothers want to charge me $12 to go across the bridge because it's a two axle trailer. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll spend the 50 cents in gas to go around the Trenton and take the free bridge. Thank you. But anyway, you wouldn't believe the amount of stuff I've thrown away. So I'm going to concentrate tomorrow on making sure this room stays clean. And since I'm going to have many more printers coming soon, I'm going to be doing some reorganization. Um, I'm kind of worried about family stealing some of this stuff back here. This is all my dad's stuff. It's Lennox and crap like that. It might be worthless, it might be worth something. I'm hoping that maybe it'll be worth a little bit and I can help pay down the mortgage on this house. Because um, I have to, if it was just me, I can just move on, but I have to take care of my sister. She's mentally retarded and I have to take care of her. Um, it's just, it's a moral obligation. You can't just, people are telling me, leave her to the state. Yeah, sure, put a gun to her head. But no, uh, I'll do my best to try to take care of her. But um, I'm gonna box all this up and I was going to replace it with racks, but then I realized that looks prettier than racks. So that's going to get filled with all my goodies and 3D prints and stuff like that, so that'll eventually look pretty cool. I'll eventually do a wider angle video just so you guys can see all that neat stuff. Uh, but I'm going to box all that stuff up to secure it because I'm afraid one of the family members might decide to steal it and pawn it and crap like that. I, don't know. I hate thinking about that kind of crap, but what can you do? You move on, you deal with it, and you do your best. So I'll be moving the printer tables into the next room after I clean that room up and all the printers will be in there except a couple enders and um, in here will be workroom space so it'll be shoving to hold everything and uh, a work table or two for me to like for example next video you're going to see me working on this work table to um, build this printer. Um, I can't do editing, it's just not going to happen, I don't have the time. Uh, I, I get home 9, 10 o'clock at night each night. I spend a couple hours doing this stuff. I go to bed, I wake up, I go back to work the next day. I work two full-time jobs. I work 90 hours a week. One of them doesn't even pay me. It's family business. Uh, it pays for the house, so without it, no house. Um, so I don't have time for it. Just the little bit of editing I do, combining videos, already takes 30, 40, 50 minutes of my night each night. I just don't... There's no time for it. There just isn't. And... Um, I will try to start compressing stuff, making it smaller so they aren't quite so big, like this video is already 37 minutes. Um, I'm going to work on trying to break things up, like maybe the mega printisodes will be three parts, and um, you know each 12-15 minute chunk will be dedicated to one print. Uh, let me know what you guys prefer. Um, YouTube statistics say shorter videos are better. 12 to 15 minutes is the ideal length for a video for long format content like I do. That um, retention is pretty bad on long videos. My retention on these longer videos is a little bit higher, but I also have a very small user base. As that user base grows, I've got to try to average out the content to retain that user base, otherwise I'll never grow. So that means the most important thing to me, oddly enough, is the customer, you. I need feedback from you guys. I've started getting some good feedback, and I'm going to act on most of that feedback. I like it. Please keep it coming. What do you want to see? Um, how many of you are okay with long format content? How many of you would prefer shorter format content? Um, 
do you mind the 60 minute mega print episodes where I show off, you know, three or four gigantic prints that I'm working on and stuff like that? Or, um, it seems that the, um, the What's Up videos were doing okay, where I would just do a quickie, you know, short video saying what I'm going on, what's busy happening, which, um, frees up a little time in the mega videos so they don't have to be quite so big. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start off by trying to keep the videos under one, um, file structure limit, meaning... 3.78 gigabytes, so 27, 28 minutes, and then I'll work down from there if I can. We'll see how it works out. Um, but give me your feedback. What do you guys like? The other thing I need from you guys is this kind of stuff. What do you want to see? Um, if you find something cool that you would like to see me try to 3D print, tell me. Now, I prefer stuff that doesn't require support, or at least not a lot of support, because it's a pain in the ass, hard to clean up, hard to set up, takes a long time to program into the slicer, and it's something I don't have a lot, I don't have a lot of time, I'm very, very restricted on time, um, that's why I'll be spending the next two or three hours building this printer, because <laughs> it's, it's at night time, I'm done work, and I don't have to go to work early in the morning tomorrow, um, I don't have to wake up as early as I normally do, so I can do the printer tonight. Um, my printer builds are going to be two-part. I am going to do the big, giant, holy shit, one to three hour video where I just run the damn camera while I build a printer. People seem to actually do like that. They'll skip through it and stuff like that. And then I'll also do a synopsis video where I'll make a second video under 30 minutes describing the process, gotchas, things like that. Um, basically, I don't really care how good or bad the printer is out of the box. That doesn't mean nothing to me. I mean, there's always issues. There's always... I mean, I have exactly one printer that has worked flawlessly, and I mean flawlessly, out of the box, and required absolutely nothing from me except to adjust and tighten nuts. One printer. That's the Ender 2. All three of them, I didn't have to do a goddamn thing to. Build it. There is no instructions. I like this printer so much that if it hangs around, I might actually make my own instruction manual for people for this printer because it's that I love this printer. It's it's it is my favorite printer. Um, it is the only one. Even the CR10 isn't perfect out of the box. Things need adjusting, tweaking, whatever you know. I had to print a new fan shroud. I had to print new nuts for the wheels because it's a pain in the butt adjusting a 300 by 300 print bed. The the although very little. It's, it's almost as turnkey as the Ender is. And I think that is just an attribute of its size. When you have something that big, there's always going to be a little bit of tweaking necessary. Now, a printer like the ANET E10, for example, required a tremendous amount of fixes and tweaks to get it to proper functional status. And proper functional status, to me, is not it makes a print. Proper functional status, to me, is it makes a good clean, reliable print without me having to dick with it every time I wanted to print. Meaning, I go up to it, I hit print, and maybe I have to turn a leveling knob a tiny bit. You know, eh, it's a little low there. Tweak, done. Okay? That, to me, is functional status. And what I will tell you is not whether the printer was great or bad. I'm going to tell you the things I didn't like, just like I did with the ANET E10. But that's not going to determine whether or not I would endorse that printer or whether or not I say it's a decent buy. What's going to determine that is, can I make that printer a functional printer, as I've just told you and described to you? And how much work did it take to do that? Okay? How much money does it take to do that? Now, the ANET E10 has not required me to spend any money. That's a very good thing. If I have to spend money to make your printer functional, you're not going to be happy with my review. <laughs> you know, um, that's one of the, even though it's one of my favorite printers, it is one of the things that really annoyed me about the One Health Duplicator i3 and the Maker Selects. You have to spend money to make those printers truly functional. You have to replace the Y carriage plate and you really do need the Z-Brace. You can get away without it, but you really need the Z-Brace. Um, but beyond that, once you do that, that doesn't actually make the printer non-functional. It just makes it a pain in the ass, because you're constantly adjusting the bed level, because the bed level is constantly changing. When you replace the Y carriage and you, replace the, and you add the Z-Bracing, it stops changing. The printer becomes consistent and reliable. 
Now that printer is from many years ago. Remember, the one house came out when printers were thousands of dollars, literally, and it was the first printer of its class, of its size. Because remember, when the duplicator came out, an 8x8x7 print volume was unheard of at that price range. It was just, for, for us getting into 3D printers, 8x8x7 by eight by inches was huge. It was like, 8x8x7 <gasps> eight by eight by inches, wow. Typical printers back then were 6x6x5, six by six by okay, or smaller. You know, like a MakerBot Mini was 4x4x5 four by four by or something like that, or 4x, yeah, 4x4x5 four by four by or something like that, or 5x5x5, five by five by, it's 4 inches, whatever, 120x120x100 100, 120 by 100 by or something like that. That was actually pretty common. And that printer was 1400 bucks. <laughs> So um, these printers today make those printers look like clunkers, like it's the way it works. People have figured out how to make stuff work, they've figured out, okay, we need the gantry to be stiff, so now the printers come with stiff gantries. Um, they figured out we need the Y plate to be solid, because otherwise it'll warp as it heats up and twists and bends. So most of these printers now come with pretty solid Y carriages. Anet, you hear me? Fix the heat and it's it's solid, but I hate the fact that it's three parts. That's that's cluddy. Make it one piece, or use nut and bolts so I can really tighten them. Um, but can I make the printer functional? And the E10 is a yes. I can make that printer functional with minimal effort. You need to um, replace the fan shroud around the, the whole thing. That's a big dinger. That they they should have corrected that from the get go. It's such an easy fix. CNC Kitchen made that fan shroud. That's amazing. Um, and then you also need to solder the um, heat bed connections. I believe they could fix that if they were to use both of the pins for the positive and negative on each side. They have two unused pins. They, there's two pins for positive and two pins for negative on the actual heat bed, but they're only using one of each. I believe if they were to use both pins on both sides, because there's six pins, you have your two sensor and you have your two um, heat bed. If they were to use the other two, it would be half the amount of amps per pin. I believe that connector would hold up fine if they did that. And then, um, of course, you gotta you got to bend the carriage straight again. Um, you have to... It's a pain in the ass to tighten the, the X carriage. It's a pain in the ass to tighten that. That needs to be fixed. They need a better way of doing that. Try to figure out some way of implementing that um, the tensioner mechanism we have for the Y on the... X carriage and that would solve that. There needs needs to be a way where I don't have to loosen it, grab this thing, squeeze it tight, and have another person put a wrench here and me put a wrench here and hope I get it tight enough that the thing won't wobble. That's a that's a bad design. Fix that. And then of course um, the um, steppers. They don't actually need to be turned. There, there's no conflict between the stepper connections and the heat bed unless it's bent. What happens is that H plate gets bent which pushes the knobs down and then they run into the um, connections. You know, Even though technically it's within tolerance, unless it's bent, just turn them backwards. You know, it's, it's just easier. Why mess with that? Just have them facing backwards. Because as you, can, as you guys have already seen, you can get some truly spectacular prints from that printer. Okay? But here's the thing. Uh, back to my thing with, the, um, with Gearbest and making money, I don't have to sell you E10s. Your best is perfectly happy if uh, you buy CR10s and Trunk CX5Ss and Enter 2s. Or if you buy Raspberry Pis, or if you buy Thermal Paste, or if you buy a quadcopter, they don't care. As long as I am bringing them revenue, that's all they care about. And as long as that's all they care about, then there's no conflict. I get cool stuff, some of it gets panned, some of it gets raved, some of it's just okay. But as long as I keep bringing them revenue, they don't care. They'll keep sending me stuff. Um, I think that's it. Let me know what you guys think. Give me feedback. Tell me what you want to see. And if enough of you want that, or if it makes sense, or if it can't hurt, I will do my best to do it. You guys have said you want more instructional videos. Um, you know, what the different things in 3D printing mean and how-tos. Like, I'm going to have a video on Raspberry Pi coming. I'm making the clips, you know, as I do each step. Getting the software, flashing it, all that stuff, hooking it up. Um... That's a fantastic idea. Great. And I love making that kind of stuff. That kind of stuff is fun to me. So you'll definitely be seeing more of that. I might do like a, a quick tips segment each week where I, I have a short little 5-10 minute video that just um, goes over one thing. Like I think the first one I'm going to do is ringing and ghosting. Um, 
going over that. But um, I have to do more research myself first to make sure I'm not talking through my ass uh, when I tell you guys about it. So let me know what you want. If you guys find cool stuff you want to 3D print, let me know. Um, I have a a small fuck ton of printers. <laughs> I have um, three Ender 2s. I have two one house, but they're both down right now. I have to work on them again. Time. I'm actually hoping to get a little bit of time tomorrow to work on the Maker Select and the one house. Get them operational again. Um, I have two CR 10s and I have an Ana E10, and I will have this printer up tonight tomorrow. And I have a S4 coming, and I have a CR10 Mini coming, so I'm going to have like 12, 13 printers. So, something else I can do. If you want me to print something for you, think of me as a printing service. I will do it, as long as it's fun and entertaining, as long as it's not a lot of grueling work. And so, especially if it's something I can do double duty and use it for the channel, I'll print it for you. And there's nothing wrong with that. Now, um, people are worried about copyright, intellectual property law doesn't apply because I'm not opening up a store to say I'm going to sell you a smiling owl pot come buy my smiling owl pot no 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 no. I don't know if this is allowed commercial usage or not but um, let's assume it's not let's assume it says commercial use is not allowed I can't do that I don't own this I can't go making a store selling these things that's for someone else to do the guy who created this thing that's for him to do but if you want to access my printing service and say, here's a file, print this for me. I can do that. There's nothing wrong, immoral, illegal, or at all about that. You just pay me for the plastic and pay me what you consider a fair rate for my time. If we come to a consensus on what that price is, I'll gladly do it. It'll be fun. I'll get to make a cool video and you know, I'll be able to add that video to the channel. It'll be something else cool to look at and I get to make a little money. You know, so I'm cool with that. Um, now, if I suspect you're using me as a commercial printing service to make stuff, I'm going to tell you no. If you, if you send me a smiling owl STL and say, hey, print this for me, I'm going to say, sure, let's come to a price that makes sense. And if you say I would like five of them, I'm probably going to tell you no, because I'm suspecting that maybe you're going to be selling them. And that's just not right. You don't own the file, I don't own the file. And even if I'm not actually doing anything illegal, if I suspect foul play on the other end, it is my moral duty to not participate in that. So, don't ask me to breach somebody's intellectual property. That would not be cool. That's why I'm not even going to give you a suggestion as to what I can print for you. I mean, not this. <laughs> um, I'm not even going to give you a suggestion like, hey, I can print this for you. That's, no, that to me, that's too close to that line of saying, I'm going to sell you an object instead of a print service. Okay, so, no, we're not going to go across that line. But, hey, maybe I can help you guys out and make a little money as well. Plus, it'll give me things to do for the channel. <laughs> I need more ideas. Um, if there's something you'd really like me to print, you would be like, oh, I want to see that mega-sized. Um, send it to me. Send me a link. If I like it, if it looks some, like something I could reasonably do in, you know, my time at night, I'll do it. Uh, why not? I got all this filament. I mean, Jesus. <laughs> okay. <laughs> At freaking ten dollars a kilogram, I bought fifteen kilograms of it. <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> oh, I got another new color too. This is cool. I like this Sakura pink. It's a very light, uh, clean pink, almost like a cherry blossom tree pink. I like that. It's cool. Um, if you guys have suggestions for stuff you'd like to see me try out, like the octopi, um, let me know. If it's within my budget, if I can afford it, if it's reasonable, and if I think I can do something with it, I'll try it. So, that's it. You guys have a great night. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for using the affiliate links. I appreciate that. It is going to make a difference to me. And I hope to be able to continue to offer you great value and entertainment and education and knowledge. Um, and I hope that you guys can help me as well, both monetarily and educationally. You know, I am always, I'm like a knowledge sponge. I love learning new stuff. It's, it's what makes this fun to me. It's what makes this interesting to me. Um, have a good night. And come back tomorrow or whenever I 
I'm spacing the videos out using the scheduling function in YouTube. It works out very well. I can upload it and say, release this tomorrow at 1. That's why all my videos tend to release at 1 or 2 o'clock. I tell it to, you know, release that one at 1 o'clock on this day, release this one at 1 o'clock on that day. It's great because I can do a bunch of videos and um, process them, get them done, and then say, okay, upload this one this day, this one this day, this one this day. So you guys get a regular trickle of content and I don't have to grind away every single night trying to figure out what to do. You know, I can just, you know, I got to start taking notes. I got to start writing things down and trying to make it more concise. Had I had the time tonight to spend an hour to go over what I wanted to talk about, I probably could have shortened this video by half. Because <laughs> here we are. We're back at a minute and 23 seconds left in this clip. So I'm back to another 57 minute video or whatever it is, 54 minute video. Uh, I've got to figure out a way to shorten them. Once again, MissTube, thank you for making this, even though it's not to my liking for the channel. I do appreciate you making that. It was very generous of you to do that. I appreciate it. And uh, keep the ideas coming. Keep the feedback coming. I'm flying blind without feedback. I need your feedback. The only stupid question is the question not asked or the question you intend to be stupid. So if you're a troll, it's a stupid question. Or, But otherwise, assuming you're not a troll, the only stupid question is the question not asked. So if you have a question, ask. I will do my best to answer it. Um, be patient. Sometimes I do not get notifications when there's a post. And I'll go to a video replying to some other posts and notice that there's three other new posts there. That's why you'll sometimes see me reply to three or four of them all at once. Because I never knew there was a, a message there for me. I never knew somebody posted a message. I didn't get notification for it. So I'm starting to use that studio thing to go through the messages to see if, okay, I answered that, I answered that, I answered that, to see if I missed any questions. I wasn't aware that I was missing those questions, so I'm sorry for the delay in answering some of your questions. I will do my best to answer as many as I can, as quickly as I can. You guys have a great night, and enjoy the upcoming videos.